In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Amazon Code Whisperer, which is an AI-powered productivity tool for developers. I'm going to show you how to use Code Whisperer to write code faster, and I'm going to share what I think about AI-powered tools for coding in general, and I'm also going to try to answer the question, is AI going to take our jobs? Before we dive into Code Whisperer, I want to say a huge thank you to AWS for sponsoring this video and letting me bring the many AWS services closer to the .NET community. In this video, we're going to be talking about Code Whisperer, which is an AI-powered productivity tool, and I'm going to share what I think about Code Whisperer from a perspective of somebody who has just started using this tool. So this is a kind of a disclaimer that I'm not an experienced user, but I do have a lot of experience with using generative AI, so I'm expecting this to be very similar, and from my testing, that turned out to be the case. So why do I find Code Whisperer interesting? First of all, it's completely free to use. Unlike some other AI-powered coding tools, you also get unlimited limited coding suggestions, reference tracking, which allows you to know if you're using some code from a public repository, and Code Whisperer is going to give you a link to the public repository where the code is coming from. Here's a very quick rundown of what Code Whisperer can do. How you're going to use it is by specifying a comment of what you want it to generate, and then Code Whisperer is going to suggest the completion that it thinks is the best fit for what you're asking it to do. There's also Amazon Q, which is an AI-powered chat assistant that can enhance what you can do with Code Whisperer. I already mentioned that if you're using some code from a public repository, Code Whisperer is going to let you know and it's going to give you a link to the repository where the code is coming from. You also get the ability to scan your code for security vulnerabilities, and this is super powerful. And Code Whisperer is available in many of your favorite IDEs. Now, I'm going to be using it from Visual Studio. And to be able to run Code Whisperer from Visual Studio, you will need to install the AWS Toolkit. It's available on the Visual Studio Marketplace, so you can go ahead and download it, install it into your Visual Studio, and you can start working with Amazon Code Whisperer. Once you have downloaded and installed the AWS Toolkit, you will be able to find it under the Extensions menu, and here you can see AWS Toolkit. If I click on the Getting Started link, this is where you would initially set up your Code Whisperer account, so you need to create an AWS account to be able to use this, but as I said, it's completely free to use. Now, I already completed this step, so I'm going to go into the next step, which is to give Code Whisperer a try, so let's check out the example. So this is a kind of tutorial for how you could get started with Code Whisperer. Now, I have Code Whisperer running in the background, and basically all I need to do is to press Enter, and I'm going to get a suggestion from Code Whisperer. I can press Tab, to auto-complete and accept the suggestion, and then I can take a look at the code and figure out if something is wrong. Now, this file is created in my temp folder, and it's not part of the solution, which is why I don't have any code completion for the S3 client, the put object request, and so on. So what I'm going to do is to take this and to move into a file that I prepared inside of my web API, where I have the same S3 uploader class, but I installed the Amazon S3 SDK to be able to access the actual types that we need to use. So let's get rid of this example, and I'm going to continue working with this version. Now you can see that the code here does seem correct, but if I hover over the put object method, I'm going to get a warning that this is inaccessible which means that you can still get code that is incorrect. What I can do from this point is to try to update the code. So let's make it asynchronous. Let's use the put object async method, which I can now await. And I should also dispose of the S3 client when I'm done using it. So let's see if we can do better by providing a more detailed prompt. So let's say a function called upload file async that uploads a file to an S3 bucket asynchronously. I'm also going to tell it to use async methods. I wanted to say that it should dispose of any resources, but let's go with the auto completion. And I'm going to add my prompt now to dispose of any resources. So let's see if we can get some code completion this time. And after a few moments, this is what pops out. And I'm much happier with this version because it's basically the same to the one that we have here only this time we got it through code completion. I'm going to get rid of the old method and let's try to tell it to create another method to delete a file from an S3 bucket. So let's say a function called 
delete file async and I'm going to autocomplete the suggestion so that deletes a file from an S3 bucket asynchronously. So let's say use async methods. I'm okay with that one. Then it's going to suggest that we should use a wait to wait for the task to complete. And it's going to generate the function that we asked for. And you can see that it follows a similar pattern, creating an S3 client, creating a delete object request this time, and then using the client to send the request and delete the file from the S3 bucket. And as you can probably imagine, Amazon Code Whisperer is optimized to work with AWS services, which I'm not complaining about. But for example, one thing that we aren't taking care of in this implementation is authentication to the S3 bucket. So how you would do that is specify your credentials when you are instantiating the S3 client. And this is something that we would have to take care of manually. You may also want to set this up with dependency injection, but that's kind of out of the scope of what Code Whisperer can do. Now, I want to show you a few more practical examples of extending the code that I already have in this solution. I'm going to head over to the workout class inside of my domain project, and let's try to do something relatively straightforward. I want to create a function that's going to update the name of this workout and also run some validations. So let's see how Code Whisperer does with something like this. So I'm going to start writing my prompt and let's say a function to update the workout's name and we already get an auto completion and I'm going to say that returns a result object and it checks that the name is not null or empty. Let me fix the spelling mistake and let's see if it does better this time. Okay, so we get a method with a signature that returns a result and the argument is a name. So let's see if it can complete the entire method body and you can see that we get back the code that I'm looking for. This looks like something that I will write myself. It's taking in the input argument, which is a string, is doing a validation to check if it's null or empty. If it is null or empty, it's going to return a failure result, which is fantastic. Otherwise, it's going to update the name and return a success result. So now the problem is this workout error doesn't exist. Let's see if it's able to generate this for me. So I'm going to add another prompt here and I'm going to say a static read only field called name cannot be empty. So you can see that it's generating a static field, but it's not read only. It's calling the error validation method, which is something I can live with. It doesn't have the complete context. And let's see if it can give me a code and a description. And you can see I'm also getting an auto suggest for the description. So let me clean this up. And I'm pretty happy with what we got. I only have to replace the call to the validation method with a problem and let's make this field read only. And this is something that I can use inside of my domain. So if I go back to the workout class, you will see that everything is compiling. Now what I want to do is to get Cold Whisper to implement a complete use case that's going to fetch the workout from the database and update the name. So I'll head over to the create workout command handler because I want Code Whisperer to have some initial context of what I'm trying to generate using my prompts. I first wanted to generate a command object and then I'm going to try to generate a respective handler for this command. So I'm going to start my prompt with a command to update the workout name. It should be a record with a workout ID property. And I'm going to say that it implements the I command interface. So let's see if we can get a completion now. And I'm getting the update workout name command. The arguments are the workout ID and the name, which is great. Now let's see if we can get a command validator. So let's say a validator for the update workout name command. And I'm getting an auto completion and you can see that it already has an idea that I'm using fluent validation in this project because it's probably seen some CQRS implementations that also use fluent validation together with mediator. So it's able to figure this out. Okay, now let's try to do the hard part and generate the command handler. So a command handler for the update workout command. I'm going to say that it depends on the I workout repository and I unit of work. Now it's also trying to inject the validator because I generated it before, but let's see if we can get it to simplify this implementation. So I'm going to say I unit of work. Then I'm going to say that the handler gets the workout using the repository and updates the workout name. I'm also going to say that the handler 
uses the unit of work to save the changes to the database. And let's see if we can get something interesting now. So I'm getting the autocomplete prompt and it's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to generate this. Now I do have to apply some fixes. So let's go ahead and simplify the implementation. I don't need to return a unit object. I just need to return a success result. And here I'm going to return a failure object that the workout was not found. Now it doesn't know which specific method to call on the workout repository which I guess is okay, but in general, the code that I'm getting here looks pretty good. One thing that's missing is to check if the update name was validated correctly. So let's try to capture the result object for this operation and see if it can complete the implementation. You can use Alt plus C on your keyboard to get a suggestion, and it's saying if the result is a failure, then just return the result, which I'm okay with. And this is something that I would do also. But again, this indentation is really driving me crazy. I wish it would just generate normal code how I'm already writing it, but I'm expecting that this is something that they will improve over time. And now I want to do something really interesting, which is to generate a unit test using X unit and add substitute for the update workout name command handler. I'm going to tell it to use and substitute to mock the dependencies and let's see what code whisper is going to suggest. So this is the suggestion and I'm liking how it looks. So I'm going to auto complete it. Now it's missing the assert step. So let's go ahead and generate that. And it continues generating the comments. And finally it gets to the assert. So now I can close up my test and this is what my test class looks like. Now I'm not inside of a unit test project. So what I'm going to do is to move this into its own file and let's move this into the unit test project for my application layer. And let's see if we are able to execute this test. So I'm going to head over into application unit tests. Let's create a folder called workouts and I'm going to paste the class inside. I'll need to add a project reference to the modules training application project, which is where my command handler is defined. And now the dependencies are going to resolve themselves. And this is what our test case looks like. So let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to get rid of these comments because I don't need them. And this is what Code Whisper gives us. So we have the workout repository and the unit work and the handler itself. It's using n substitute to generate the mocks which I like, is properly creating the handler instance, which is great. And then it's formatting my test using a range act and assert, which is awesome. Now it doesn't know that I'm using fluent assertions, which I can forgive. It doesn't have all of the context, but I do like that it's creating a command, a workout object. It's also configuring my mocked instance to return the workout object when I'm passing in the command with this workout ID, which is fantastic and then it's executing the handler. It's also passing in a default value for the cancellation token, which is pretty cool. And it's getting back a result to verify that it's successful. So let's rewrite this using fluent assertions. And you can see that now it's able to figure it out. And the one thing that's left is to see if this test is actually working. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this test and let's see if it's passing. So you can see our test is passing, which is absolutely awesome. Let's see if it's able to generate a test case where it's going to return null from the mock and then verify if we get back a failure result. So I'm going to say a test case where the workout repository mock returns null and we verify for a failure result. So let's see what it's able to come up with. Here is the test and let's see what we have here. So we have a command, which we're just going to use to execute the handle method, but it's properly configuring the mock to return a null value. And then it's checking that a success should be false. So let's go ahead and run our two test cases that were both generated using code whisperer. And you can see that both of our tests are passing. So overall, I'm pretty happy with what I'm able to achieve using code whisperer all things considered. Keep in mind that this is a completely free tool. And we started from our domain project by generating a method to update the entity. Then I moved into my use cases and it correctly created a command, a respective validator and a complete implementation for a use case handler together with null checks. It needed some help on the validation, but otherwise everything seemed great. And we were also able to generate 
the test cases for our command handler in basically no time. We just needed to write a simple prompt and it was able to generate a very solid test case using nsubstitute to generate the mocked instances of our services. So is AI going to take our developer jobs? I don't think this is the case just yet, but what we do have right now is an excellent opportunity to use AI to become more productive as developers. So whether you're using Code Whisper, GitHub Copilot, or some other tool out there, it's something that can definitely help you write code faster. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave it a like, subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know in the comments if I should make another video reviewing GitHub Copilot. And until next time, stay awesome.